Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're going to go over how to create Selenium automated tests using Pester and Azure DevOps pipelines. All right, so before getting started with this, we need to install a Pester extension. So we need to go to the marketplace. And search for Pester. And the one you want is the one that's uh, created by Pester themselves. Get it. Install it. Okay. Let's go back to our organization here. Go to your project. And let's go ahead and first create a repo. Give your repo a name. Hit create. I'm going to create our test file. And this is the file we're going to use to put our pester test in. So again, I follow the naming convention as in my previous video. Okay, so let's start off with a describe block. And now we're gonna add a context block. Make this look a little nicer. And we're gonna have a before all. And an after all blocks. And in the before all uh, block, we're gonna tell it to install the Selenium module. And you have to install it as with a scope of current user because you don't have admin privileges in the Microsoft hosted build agents. And then we're going to tell it import module. Okay, that, that will install the Selenium module. And of course, the first thing we want to do is start up a instance, instantiate a driver instance. And for this example, I'm just going to use Chrome. But just know that um, the Microsoft hosted uh, Azure DevOps agents have all the browsers, all the major browsers, so you can use any of them. Uh, I just want to keep this example simple, so I'm going to use Chrome. And I'm going to set up a timeout of uh, 15 seconds. And then, of course, you know, uh, we need to add the initial page that's going to load up. And what this will do is it's going to instantiate a Selenium Chrome driver, and then it's going to go to the Google search page. And just like we have a before all and the after all, I want to stop it because otherwise it will never end. It'll just keep going. Okay. So now we can start creating our tests. So we'll do an it block. Um, I guess the first thing to test is that the search field exists. Right, so when you get to the search page, you want to make sure there's a search field there. I'm going to say element. Okay. So if we go to Google, this, this is what we're going to be doing. So it's taking us here, right, to the Google search page. And we need to see if this exists, right? Okay, so we need to go to the developer tools. And we need to find out what this, how we can identify the search field object. So I'm going to use this little arrow here, click on it, and we see that it has a name of Q. So it's an input with a name of Q. Okay. So find element with the name of Q. And oops, a 
timeout of timeout, right? So that's defined over here. So this is an implicit timeout. If it doesn't find this element within 15 seconds, then it'll timeout. And since we have this element identified, I'm gonna also tell it to fill out the search field. So I'm gonna use the send selenium keys and the element, oops. Right, element, object. Um, then the keys, we wanna send it Selenium PowerShell. So let's test that over here. All right. So our test will consist of searching for the terms Selenium PowerShell. And then I'm going to check that. I'm going to validate that this is the first result. Okay, so all it's doing though, it's only sending the keys. It's not actually clicking search. And that's because before I click search, I want to test this. I want to make sure that this element should not be, oops. Right? So in other words, if it doesn't find the search field, it should throw an error. Okay, I'm going to use this for my next test. Paste it. And the search button should be present. And so let's go back over here. Now I need to identify the button. Okay, so this button can be identified with the name button K right here. So let's go back over here. Find element by name. B T N K. But this time, I'm not going to take any action after it. Just make sure that the button exists. I'm going to copy this. I'll make the next test. And this will be the one where it actually takes action and, and validates the results. Okay, verifies the results. So for this one, say element, oops. Actually, we wanted to find that same element. So one of the things that I found out while using Selenium within pester test is that each it block when you go when you jump when each test jumps from it blocks even though I set a variable here you can't use it over here so I'm gonna leave this button K right the search button I'm gonna find and look for it again but this time it's so that I can use it within this it block and I'm gonna say invoke S E click because I want to click on it and then I want another element okay so now let's go over here so now I've I've done my search right so now I want to validate this so I got to look for this search result now if you look at this this will have you know all these different search results and each one each one of these has a h3 block which is the title. So that one has that one. If I go to the next result over here, that one's also an, a, an H3. But in this test, I am assuming that the creator of the Selenium PowerShell module is going to be always the result. Might not be the case in the future, but that's what I'm going to test for. So, so we go back over here. I'm going to borrow this because this is just easier to copy and paste. So find element SE driver and this one is 
tag. So we're going to say by tag name. And the tag name is H3. Timeout, leave it alone. And what we want to compare for is, or test is that the text, so the, the, the element that it returns, I'm going to get the inner text. And I want it to be, I'm checking, I'm going to check to see that it's this here. Hopefully I'm pasting it correctly here. Should be exactly, oops. I think that'll do, but let's just go over this again. So describe context. So context, oh, I need to give uh, these guys names. Oh, search. Right. Okay, so let's go ahead and commit this. I'm gonna leave the default message. Alright, so now let's go to pipelines. And we're gonna create a pipeline for this. Let's get rid of this junk over here. I'm gonna use Windows because um as far as I know, that's the only one that has an actual UI. And for Selenium tests, you know, I wanted to actually instantiate a, a browser, a full browser, and not necessarily a headless one. But you could if you want. I mean, for me, I just, I'm okay with this. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of these uh, tasks here, or steps. Uh, the first thing we wanna do is look for Pester. That's the extension we installed. And we'll leave the defaults. Um, one thing that I would add to this is continue on error. True. Uh, if you don't do that, uh, it'll actually error out your entire pipeline if, if any of the tests fail. And it's what Pester recommends in their extension page. So we'll leave that. And then we need a way to consume the results. Right, so it's gonna output them in this XML. So we wanna publish test results, end unit. I don't trust the wildcard thing, so I'm gonna put in a test-pester.xml. And here I will say fail if there are test failures. We're gonna add that. Let me change this. And I think we're good. We should be able to run this pipeline. I'm gonna commit it with a default message directly to master. And let's go to our job. Okay, looks like it's done. It says three tests passed. Let's go to the results page here. Uh, click on the tests tab here and it says all my tests passed let's go over here to test plans and then runs okay so now if we go to the test results we can see that each of our tests passed okay so one of the nice things about being able to do this in Azure DevOps is you get to use a Microsoft hosted VM I don't have to spin up my own VMs or anything like that I don't want to test on my local machine. In this example, I'm using a publicly accessible site. I'm sure some of you will need to do this, but with a on-prem hosted uh, VM or something like that. Uh, so there'll be those cases, but if you're testing a publicly accessible site, you don't even need to use anything that's on-prem. You can just use one of Microsoft's throwaway machines, right? It's a cleaner way to do things. Now, of course, I'm showing you a very simple example. Ultimately, I don't know how well this can scale. Maybe uh, some of these things would be need to be placed in some kind of page objects model type of structure. It would probably make things easier and make this test look even cleaner. To get started with this, it's pretty simple. Um, 
I'm curious to see how other people have used Selenium and Pester. I look forward to any feedback. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Bye.